Hello. Ever watch a Guns movie and wonder, how was that made? Well, probably not. But I'm going to show you anyway, as I take you behind the scenes of Locust Play. Okay, so... This is the shot that I'm going to recreate. Alright, pretty cool. And here is the shot with no effects and no camera movement. Yeah. Pretty boring. Let's see that again. Cool. Boring. Awesome. Yawn. So. What we want to do is bring out some of that, uh, some of that grunginess that we see right here. Uh, possibly a, a prison food fight, or uh, you know, whatever they do in prisons. Now, for this effect, we don't need any real food. As you can see, that can get kind of uh, kind of messy. We're just going to use an effect called Color Curves. We're going to use a reset to none preset. That way, it doesn't affect anything immediately in the scene. Now basically how color curves works is the lower half represents the dark area and the upper half represents the light area. And this line represents your footage, the darker areas of your footage and the lighter areas of your footage. So I can drag the darker area of the footage up into the light area and anything that's pure black becomes pure white, like a negative of a photo. And the same thing with the light area of the footage, dragging it to the dark area, you can see that anything that was light becomes dark. And as you might guess, the middle just kind of gradients, uh, light to dark, dark to light, etc. So by moving around the middle, you can change the shades as a whole, not so much just the light or just the dark. It's a very handy effect once you learn how to use it properly. Um, so what we're going to be creating here is contrast curves. I'm just going to bring the darks down darker and the lights we're just gonna brighten them up a little bit right here and as you can see this contrast really brings out all that grit on the wall there now let's right click on our color curve and we'll choose create point and this is a nice little trick to give you extra contrast for uh, enhancing your look just a little bit and you can just kind of uh, yeah, tweak it move it around just try and find that right look for that particular shot that looks pretty good. Now the trouble with using color curves on guns is guns is a video game and as such you might get some strange colorizations such as this. Um, basically anything slightly yellow may appear very yellow and anything slightly purple may appear very purple. Don't worry about that too much though. Um, we'll come back to that later. For now just try and make it look as good as you possibly can. Uh, that looks that looks pretty good to me. Now we're gonna add that blue effect that you've seen in the video. This guy is lonely and distant, and that's kind of the feeling that we're going for. We're gonna, so we're gonna use blue for that. Now to do that, we could just come over to our blue channel here and just start messing around with the blues. However, you could mess that up and you don't want to deal with that, especially if you've been working for a while and undo is not an option. So instead, we're just going to add another reset to none color curve preset. And now we have two. And if you're not quite sure which effect is which, you can always turn one on or off to see how it's affecting the scene. Okay, so with our new color curve selected, let's select the blue channel. And we're just going to boost the blues a little bit. And uh, just try and find the right mix for this particular shot. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And if you need to, you can always go back to your original curves, our contrast curve, and adjust that as needed. And that looks good. Now, I know what you're thinking. Joe my gosh, noob, what's with the yellow zores? Well, I was just about to get to that. However, to tell you the truth, it's always going to be there. But, we can lessen the effect. 
So to make this look a little less cartoony, we can just scroll down our effects list. I'm pretty sure this is still done in alphabetical order. Oh, there it is. Saturation adjust is what we're looking for. We're going to choose reset to none. That way everything is set to its default values. So we're just going to slide the amount this way and then just play with the center until uh, until you find that desaturation that you're looking for. And each shot will be different, so you just got to kind of play with it until you find the right mix. And now you can see that the uh, the yellow and the purples aren't so intense anymore. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. All right, so already this is looking much better. And um Let's just do a little before and after. So just right click on the event effects and choose bypass all. And that turns everything off. Then enable all turns it back on. And you can just kind of see how far we've come already. Now, it's important to get that cinematic look. At least that's why I say I do it. When in reality I'm just trying to get rid of this Fraps logo that way I don't actually have to buy the program and give the Fraps people any money. Yeah. Just click this and boom, it's gone. All I did was click on the pan crop tool, and then chose the widescreen TV aspect ratio preset. And from here, you can just you know, find the shot that you're looking for and, you know, frame it properly. Now, we're just going to click and drag the box with the F in it, and uh, as you can see, it kind of moves really freely it could be kind of hard to control so just hold shift and now it kind of moves along its X or Y axis and uh, that just makes it easier to keep it within the frame so just make sure the edges line up with your shot and uh, that's good so now we're going to be creating the zooming effect that you've seen in the completed shot now we're going to be zooming out so we want the zoomed out keyframe to be at the end and we're going to insert a keyframe at the beginning so click on the create keyframe button or hit insert on your keyboard and click and drag the corner of the frame to zoom it in and make sure your lock aspect ratio is selected otherwise you may get some undesirable results when trying to you know, resize your frame unless that's the effect you're going for. However, for this example, we're gonna keep it on. So we're gonna click and drag this box and uh, just try and find an interesting point. Like right here, we can see all the, uh, the grunge and the dirt there. So what we've done here is created a first keyframe and a last keyframe. And uh, basically the first keyframe holds the zoomed in data and the last keyframe holds the zoomed out data. So basically you're just telling it, it's zoomed in when it starts, and it's zoomed out when it finishes. Now make it happen, computer. Okay, that's not bad, but I think we can still spice it up a little bit. So what we're going to do here is just create a keyframe about three quarters of the way in. At this point, we're almost fully zoomed in. And this keyframe is going to hold that data. We're going to bring it over to the beginning. Or rather, um, not quite the beginning, but pretty close to it. Well, let's see exactly what that did. Now, as you can see, it zooms out quicker at first. And then this nice slow zoom after that. And you don't want to do this all the time. It just, uh, in this case, adds to the mood and uh, the overall feel to the film. Now we're going to add a fade to the video. And all you do is just click and drag the top corner of your footage and uh, just kind of drop it wherever you want. And there you have it. 